Last episode, number three, I created the keelson. In this episode, I'll add the stems, at each end completing the backbone of the skiff. Both steam bending and laminating are involved. Welcome to episode four. A St. Lawrence skiff is an indigenous craft to the Thousand Islands area of the St. Lawrence River on the border of the United States and Canada. I have several of these skiffs that will carry a rower and one passenger, but I need a larger version capable of carrying myself and two passengers on guided tours of the river. Most of these tours will take place in my home base of beautiful Chippewa Bay, but the easy trailer ability will allow me to explore other areas. I will be creating a craft which combines the aesthetics, stability, and performance of this traditional skiff using modern methods. Join me on this journey through video episodes as the skiff comes to life and we all learn just what it takes to create one. Who knows, you may end up joining me in the skiff or even creating a skiff of your own. Building a St. Lawrence skiff is brought to you by the generosity of Total Boat and the help of Chase Small Craft. Check them out. so nice when that thing finally shuts off. Okay, so we got a whole bunch of pieces here of white oak that are ready to be laminated into the stem. Now this is the inner stem. So this is what we end up, what we need is this shape looking from the side and these pieces will be bent, steam bent, into this shape like I don't want to bend it because I don't want to break it but it'll go around this curve and then there'll be another one there'll be five of them stacked up steam bent and then once it cures we will then epoxy them all together so they'll be steam bent laminates they're already the right width and the thickness we'll have to trim a little bit at the end we'll make it a little bit fat so that's enough to do both ends of the inner stem See the flame. We're going to put a wind guard up. This should protect it from the flame from the wind. Okay, now we just got to wait for it to heat up. Might as well put the wood in. first steam bent piece this is about three-eighths of an inch thick by a little over an inch wide I'm using an aluminum one-eighth by one and an eighth backer 
And I'm going to do these one at a time. So my plan is, I've got this first one here. Now I'll go do the other end, put the first one there. By the time I come back from doing that one, this should be cooled enough that I can then pull this off, put the next um, piece on top and the backer and do the second one. And I'll stack them up that way. Now I might be able to do all of them at once, but it would be a lot harder. If I had two people, I could probably do it. But by myself, I'm gonna do it this way. Okay, here's my takeaway so far. You don't have very much mechanical advantage right here on this end. So you definitely want to use a screw type clamp at this end, not a squeeze type clamp and of any type. You know, it's gotta be a screw, either a C-clamp or one of these Jorgensen type that are adjustable. That'll pull this in nice and even because this is pretty straight right here. As you move up this way, at the other end, I was using some squeeze type clamps up near the top. No problem at all. You've got some advantage here because mechanical advantage because you got some more wood down the end. The backer, my goodness, this makes a huge difference. Uh, my friend Andy Derby reminded me when I talked to him on the phone, he said, you know, you're going to use a backer, right? And I'm like, oh, I didn't even think about that. But normally I'm making ribs, which you can't use a backer. They're going on the inside. But in this case, it made a huge difference so far. Now we've got two done. We're going to do five on each end. So I can feel there's a little bit of heat left in here. You can feel it coming out of the aluminum. Um, we, I don't want to undo these until they've cooled a little bit, but that second one's fairly cool. So I'm going to give it another 10 minutes, and then we're going to do the third one. Here's what the other end looks like. There are two of the pieces of white oak here. Now I had this squeeze type clamp originally on the bottom. And like I told you before, you don't want this squeeze type. This was pulling out a little bit. I switched over to the C clamp, sucked it right in there, no problem. Now we're gonna get a little bit of spring back when we release all these even after they're cured. But when we epoxy it, we're gonna use this form to epoxy them all together. So we'll get it right back into shape. Well, I adjusted the flame and obviously I turned it off somehow. I must've dropped it too low. Maybe the wind blew or something. I went to grab a piece out of here and it was warm, but not hot and not bendable. So now we got it going again and we'll have to give it a few minutes. The temperature can't be down very much, so it should steam up pretty quick. I only got one more piece to put on each end. I think we better switch glove spec. That's pretty hot. <laughs> Come on, quick, quick. Thank you. Hey, do you mind? I'm trying to work here, buddy. I'm trying to work here. There we go. Spec, I need a few more hands. Five layers, that one's complete. That's it, five layers there, five layers at the other end. 
Let me grab the piece, I'll show you what we're making. This is the piece we're making right here. So you can see that this line continues straight across and the keelson comes almost to here. So this will all be cut off right here. Right where that, right about like that. So we'll let this sit overnight and then tomorrow we'll glue it up. This is where the nut's gonna go, and this line is where I have to drill a hole. Well, finally, <laughs> I got a slot big enough to hold this 7 16 wrench, which I have to do because the only 7 16 nut I found around here that fit was a stainless steel with a nylon insert. So now when I tighten this up, you can see that it draws everything together nicely. And that will hold that in place until the whole boat's done and we cut this off here and get rid of those pieces. But for now, that's going to work really well. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this back out and we're going to glue up all these laminates. One, two, three, four, and number five. Okay, we'll take this over, clean the epoxy off the sides. Definitely is supposed to be, the keel is going to sit on top of this, so it's got to go over there and then forward this way. So there's where this needs to be cut. And then the keelson will come down onto here and this line, which we put as the front of the keelson, lines up exactly where that comes to a point. So that is the correct line right there. So now we gotta cut that off. But I don't think we'll do it in place. I think we'll do it over on the bench. Before we do something stupid, we've got this, why not check it with this? So that goes there. Right to there, and that is that line. Perfect. Now we can cut it. Some silicone bronze Frearson screws. This 
This is a fuller countersink with a tapered drill bit and then it countersinks and drills it out at the same time. Kind of a must have. We're going to put a little bit of wax on the end of the screw. Try not to get it on here so it doesn't affect things later on. But we are screwing into white oak and uh, we don't want to snap the screw off. We'll give it a little bit of help. Some people use soap, but I have the wax, so I don't think I'll live long enough to use that thing of wax up. If you are using the silicone bronze screws, they look like Phillips. They are not Phillips, they are Frearson. There's a definite difference. And if you use a regular Phillips bit on a Frearson screw, you will tend to strip the head. A Phillips head is designed to torque out so when you go too hard it'll slip. Frearson's are not. They're also sometimes called reed and prints. Generally nowadays I hear them called Frearson's. One thing I was worried about with this lamination of these five pieces of white oak here on the stem was that I'd get a lot of spring back. So, meaning that it would, when you release it, it would pop off of the form a little bit. Well, when I first popped it off before I glued it, there was a little bit of spring back. But once, it, once I put the epoxy on and let it cure, it only came up a tiny bit. And now when I let go of the clamp, you don't see daylight through here. So there's not any spring back, but might as well leave the one clamp on just so we're not putting pressure on this joint. Later on, I'm gonna epoxy this joint. I just, I don't wanna epoxy it yet and then find out I've gotta separate this for some reason. The final step on the stems was to create the bevel, which is the landing surface, where the end of each strip is glued to the stem. Total hours on the project at this point is 42 and a half. Next time, I'll be adding strips, which means this thing is gonna start looking like a boat. I'll see you in episode five.